Go on in, everybody. Oh, right. <laughs> Trying to get comfy isn't working. I just whacked my knee about a thousand times. Okay, so if you're looking at this and you're thinking, what the fuck? Why is there a hole there? What the fuck is going on? First of all, you're in the wrong video. One, because if you don't like my swearing, bye bye. <laughs> Two, sorry, I'm just a little bit of a smart ass. Two, in the previous video, we went over creating a modular brownstone building for a game engine. Now, if you guys have followed along with the videos, you've seen that they are entirely modular in every way. Uh, the brickwork matches, matches up, if I can actually speak. Another thing they're modular in, uh, we can bring them back and they're still pretty modular. That's even with a sidewalk, whatever there as well. Looks really good, actually. You should look at it because it really does look good. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. And they're actually individually pieced. Every single aspect is individually pieced. And the reason for that is simple. Oh, fine, you don't want to go? I'll take you out myself, bitch. Ah, oh, I see why. <laughs> right, let me just take this wall too. I'm just going to duplicate this across on itself. Get rid of that. Bring it in a bit. Get rid of that. And that. And it's a poor attempt because I haven't deleted whatever I needed to, but you can see again, you can create any length, any width, any height, um, width one. What I would do is I'd have another one across here like so and then I'll just take out the side wall and I'd place it there as well so I don't mind the 19 blah blah blah. I'd have it there. There's ways to fix it, don't worry too much in the detail about it. So anyway, yeah, it's completely modular in every way. Hopefully, we will find out soon enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open it because I don't know, I actually know what I've just did, done to it. I didn't. Oh, no! <gasps> oh... I hope I auto save that. Oh fuck. Fuck fuckity fuck fuck. Uh right, thirteen nineteen. Oh thank god. Okay. <laughs> Woo Woo I actually thought that I saved that. <laughs> so <Sorry. laughs> Right. Let me just uh, go back to previous, go to the center. And I'm gonna save it. Cause I don't wanna fuck up anymore. <laughs> oh I could have cried then. Okay, right, so, over the course of the tutorial, I'm sorry for swearing, I'm actually crying as well, and I know I'm just weird in every way possible, and I take the weirdest approach to teaching you guys how, one, I'm not a teacher, so, suck it up, <laughs> two, I like to bring to the table the A game, in other words, if you're having a tutorial, and I find it's a lot of, if you're having a tutorial, the guy will get everything fucking perfect straight away. Now, first of all, that's impossible. Every artist has issues that they have to overcome. And they have to figure out how to get over those issues. I actually had an interview last night with a game company for a position. And I explained to him, because he asked me, it, because I work with Blender, would I have issues getting any of the 3DS Max models into Blender? or vice versa, I said I'd have no problem with it whatsoever. I told him one time I probably did. However, I learned how to get the models in, got all the appropriate scripts, programs, whatnot, and it works great. And he was like, oh, okay, that's really good to hear. So, the reason I do this, and I'm babbling on, I'm like five minutes into the video and I'm babbling on. The reason I do these tutorials with you guys this way, unedited, is so any problems you owe, you face following my tutorial you will know how to fix them 
you will know how to overcome obstacles which are very hard like for instance earlier in the tutorial we were talking about when when we first started designing it and we were doing this ground floor modular system we were like well I was like how the hell am I gonna get it so it's seamless so whenever we duplicate it across it works and it's seamless and there's no gap in here and there's nothing there and here's the same thing for when we're at the end of the street and we overcame it eventually um, you might not have overcame it with me actually because I might have left that bit out but I explained to you what I did and it wasn't too hard to just follow along with it was just a case of adding this wall here and bringing that wall down and making sure that it goes around like so then obviously we had the issue of the correct height and scale for the model which actually will bring me to my next thing guys the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna name all these textures because I wanna bring in the base building as one mesh just to see if it's the right size and shape it should be but I just wanna verify so we're gonna name this um, brownstone building underscore underscore one underscore underscore if you're using cryblend if you're using uh, 3ds max name it wherever the crap you want I don't know how that works so yeah so I'm just gonna do the same here modular brown going and this is gonna be two this concrete we didn't actually use so I'm gonna get rid of it uh, the wood three window four bitumen is five and the floor which we haven't used but we will is six so make sure there's underscore underscore and then the material number one to six then we're gonna do another one and this one is gonna be seven underscore underscore proxy okay because we're gonna have a phys physics collider uh, collisions with our models so if you have the cryblend down here in this arrow you click it you can get the cryblend material physics we're going to apply the phys proxy node draw to the proxy and the rest of these we're going to apply a phys none so once we've applied all of these we will go ahead and save again so save oh don't worry it's there it's because it's not all linked together and I don't really want to unlink it again so I'm gonna just do that for a minute I'm gonna link it all together but I'm gonna link it on here okay now I'm gonna add an export node I'm gonna call this uh, brownstone building test brassgone underscore building underscore test so we're gonna add that as a CDF <laughs> bit of a on the screen right cryengine game SDK objects assets architecture modular residential and we're gonna save it here So in fact we're going to do another folder because there's quite a lot so we're going to put it in brownstone so we're going to save it into the brownstone because we now have a brownstone modular system we can do any type of brownstone building we want with that one because we've saved it as well we can also open the project file up change a bit bring it back in hey presto Bob's your uncle Fanny's your aunt and you're happy to go so this will take a while we may even get a lot of export issues because I've just linked it all together. I haven't removed any of the doubles, the vertices, because we have a lot of vertices in there because they're all separate, separate modular pieces. But over the process of this part, we're going to go into the engine with the building base test and we're going to work on the materials as a one. And then we will export the pieces individually. So usually it would not take Blender this long to export something because it's not even that dense either in polycount. 
Is it? 50,000 trees. Okay, guys, I didn't think it was that dense. Uh, oh. It's f if I remove the doubles, that goes down to 25. Oh, it's 28k inverts, which isn't too bad. Because it's all modular, don't forget. So a lot of these pieces, we're just going to be taking in and out and moving about and shaking in, giving the okey pokey. So let me see if I had any errors. I had two errors. So those errors would have been the vertices. So let me have a look at what the errors were. No, I have 12 CPU cores, not two. Um, two errors. Warning. Removed vertices. Oh! No warnings, just errors. So I'm going to go with a new level. I'm going to go with a city. Because <laughs> everybody wants to do forests in the cry engine and jungles. We're going to do a city. No, I'm joking. So we're going to uh, come down to the ground, save our level, and we're going to bring it in now. So let's go to job entity, objects, assets, architecture, uh, residential, modular, nope, that's a different one. So it didn't, so we need to go back in here, we're going to remove all the doubles. 28,000 verts. Okay, so we just halved it, right? I'm going to add an edge split modifier. I'm going to re export. Type in B because it doesn't matter what the DAE, the Collada is named, even. Alright. Oh, I hope it's not trying to put the textures in as well. I think that might be what it's trying to do. <coughs> Failed to load geometry. Failed to open for reading. I think that's because we haven't applied the rotation and scale. Another thing as well, guys, is our doors that we're going to be working on for the building. Um, that's not much of an issue either because of the fact that we modelled the doors with the building, so we don't need to resize, reshape. They should just literally sit in there perfectly. So again, I don't know why it's taking this long. I know which bit is taking up the vertically count though. It is the um what do we call it? There we go. Finished, no errors, no warnings. That means it is in and ready to go. So if we reload our asset folder, we should have modular now, residential, brownstone, and we have the building test. So let's bring in the building test. First thing I'm gonna do is just change my time of day because I haven't messed about with the PBR yet. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down, turn my snapping off, and I'm going to bring this down into the ground. Now, you'll be thinking, what is he doing now? I'm bringing it down to the ground for a reason. Let's leave the one step there. So we haven't added our proxies yet, so we need to make sure that it's the right size. And it is actually really good size. Uh, oh. It's not actually that bad. Set the windows and the doors because the doors are there. So we're going to need to scale it up. Uh, we're also going to need to scale it across again. So let's just go ahead into the engine and we're just going to scale. So scale. Let's have a look at what we're doing at the moment. See where we are. One, two, three, four, five, six. Scale it so it's about eight meters across. And 
I just want to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, definitely there. The reason why is because we're going to bring in a modular pieces. We're going to do the same thing. So again, I'm going to export the game, turn off my new materials, put it whatever there. It will export a collider, and it will also re-export this building. Now already, looking at the building, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, it might be a little high for poly counts, but remember, we can easily take floors out, put floors in. It's not too bad. If you look at the overall wireframe, it's not actually that bad in terms of wires either. Yeah, the, uh, the window frames have maybe a little bit high but they're not too high so while I'm doing that actually I wanna select the windows and I wanna just give it a window texture so I'm gonna let's go with like uh, textures let's go with a default for now and let's just go with like a Grey. Now we've turned the specular up, so it should reflect quite nicely. Um, also, here we go. Still exporting, so we'll give it a minute to do what it needs to do. But you can see if we come down here, you can see that we've got this nice reflection. I'm going to put my PBR on. So I'm going to add a new um, layer, PBR, and in there I will do a MISC environment probe, place that on the terrain, bring it up slightly, and then I'm just going to quickly put down the designer, snap the grid for this, and just get an overall shape like that, keep clicking, and then press escape, click that, give it a white material. So materials, default, apply it, rotate this, and with that like that, I'm also going to select my PBR box, I'm going to change my time of day so there's a big shadow. I think my mouse might be playing up so I do apologise, I'll just smash it against the floor until it works. Okay, so select the PBR and let's go ahead and activate 5000 by 5000 by 5000 and we're going to generate the cube map. Let it work. We're going to keep turning it on and off until it comes into play. Eventually it will work. So I just need to. Here we go. Done. Right. So we're going to look at this side, not the other. So has it exported yet? That's what I want to know. It has. So if we jump back into the game, it should be bigger, and it isn't. It's not really an issue. Windows though are way too reflective now, so we're going to turn the reflection down. Probably the color as well. We're going to want it like a here we go. Let's get reflection and. Let's just play with a couple of the other materials before we start getting away with things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this to the floor. And then I'm going to duplicate across. 
Now it should snap to the grid. And it does. Oh, that's wicked. It snaps into place. No, it doesn't. It's just a little bit over. We can set our snap and though individually. Okay, so I'm just going to put free out. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to duplicate them across the street. Rotate. 180 degrees and okay that'll do for now so we're going to change our lighting because I don't like where the sun is at the moment I want to be able to see here we go so we're going to apply the textures now so we're going to change this to glass We're going to change the surface type to glass. We're also going to turn on use diffuse and environment map. If we add one, textures, cube maps. Okay. Just gonna have a little look see. Yeah, no, we don't want that because you can see into it. You don't want to be able to see inside. We can change that later on anyway for when we work on a um interior version. An enterable even so again I'm just going to turn down probably turn down there too and I'm going to save that so I'm going to open up brick textures brick modern let's go for uh, brick one let's have a look it's not too bad Okay, so now we've got the brick one, so we're going to add our normals. Brick one normal. Turn up our smoothness. Probably going to have to use the displacement as well, so I'm going to put in a specular and a height. So displacement. Once we've done that, turn on parallax occlusion mapping. And we're gonna change our height bias to zero, which is gonna push the bricks out. My mouse is really starting to annoy me. Okay, so again, that's not really an issue at the moment because we're working on the textures itself. So, once we have the POM, we're done with that. Let's just save that as a concrete. Probably gonna have to restart the computer in a minute. And we're gonna go under diffuse, textures, concrete, floor. Good. I was making sure that that wasn't an error with um, the video recording software. So again, put in our concrete, put in the normal, Let's turn our normals up, put in a small little height. We won't really need the height map for this. However, we can just turn it on. 
see what it's like. So we've got parallax collision map. Turn it way, way down. And it gives it a little bit more of an oof. Okay. So overall, it's looking pretty snazzy. Is my keyboard not working at all? Give me one second, guys, because I don't. I think I broke my keyboard. I have broke my keyboard. What have I done? I was wondering why my keyboard stopped working. Ah, uh, I fixed it. <laughs> oh, really? That didn't help, did it? Okay, so my keyboard's working now. Yep. <laughs> now that's not bad. Uh, I don't know what this tiling is though. Um, I used the wrong. That's why I used the wrong normal map. So I'm going to change the creek floor DDNA. There we go. That's the right normal map. Creek floor displacement. There we go. So I'm going to. Put my palm to about there. Turn my shadow down. Put in concrete. And I'm going to save that as it is. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I can see an issue. Uh, crap. Crop, crop, crop. Let's just have a look. See if it's a bad one or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. We can fix it. We can fix it before the final import. Let's do it now. Just so we know it's fixed. So what I'm going to do is just change all of these steps. See, that's what I did wrong. Is because uh, Oh no, even my normals are messed up now. Okay, so I'm going to change all of these steps. P, make it a separate selection. And then I'm going to grab these steps over here. Duplicate. Rotate 180 degrees, and then I'm just going to replace the steps now. So I'm going to bring them down. Bring them across. Now, if you look here, the steps are actually a different angle as well. So. I want to get the first step down. Scale it on the Z. Bring it down on the Z as well. Scale it again on the Z. Just keep bringing it down until there we go. Right about there. So I'm going to hide that, and I can see that the top face here gets deleted. So I'm going to hide everything else, and I'm just going to delete the face. Same here, just delete the face. Bring that out. And I just need to select the other piece. Delete it. Well, they should be a lot better. Uh, one other thing 
I just need to fix real quick is this part here my keyboard's broke again I don't know what is going on today I'm going to change this to a brick and I'm going to re-export so apply the rotation make sure it's all one piece let's look at the right building test I'm going to export Uh, to the now a couple of things are going to change one the size because I've exported to the right place so I'm going to use the one building again two the steps And I know you guys kept asking me for this, and I never got around to doing it. Was um, a better road tutorial or a new version of it? So I'm gonna do it with this sort of as a follow along, the next part even. just because oh, it's uh, writing it now isn't it okay just because like the way that these roads will work they like, sort of will work for this building so <laughs> it'd be quite cool if we can get modular so the building itself is modular as well I'm not sure if my road would actually work with it. Could try it. That's better. Okay. That may be a little bit too tall. I think it's a little bit too. Not tall. But let's just have a look at the steps now. The steps are fine this top part here can, can go really uh, I'll change this to concrete and I'm going to scale it to around about there I'm also going to scale it down while I'm here. So I'm going to scale it down so it's about 5 meters. Apply the rotation and scale. Export again. And let's go. That'll fix that. Now where was I? Road. So I'm going to go into my geom entity road. Just a road straight. Let's just see how it looks. Because these are pretty much the same textures that was used in the tutorial video.
Now oh, we could probably scale the row down and get away with it here. Doesn't look too bad. I think it might be a little too tall, that's why I'm just re-exporting it now. But overall, it doesn't look too bad, does it? There we go, re-export finished. Reposition. And bring that across. Bring it down. Across again. that Like bring two cubes and then just like straight across, and that would be fine. We just do the same sort of thing, just all the way down. And that's good. That's a good start, guys, because th th this is really good. <laughs> I'm quite excited for this because it is starting to look really good now. It's starting to take shape and it's paying off and it's all about the right size. Ow. Oh, no, I'm stuck on the road. You can put a really good sewer system in there, too. Okay, so we've got the windows in, we've got the brick in, we've got the concrete in, and let's work on the wood. So we're going to go into Photoshop close all this shit open downloads and we're going to use this wood so we're going to use the wood fine and what we're going to do is we're just going to change the size first of all so we're going to do uh, 2048 by 1024 we're going to I want to try and play with this, make it look painted. So I'm going to give it a colour overlay. Go for like a grey. Apply the rotation and scale. And I want to try and overlay it so that this is white. But I want to try and keep a lot of that detail in too. That's another way to do it, is to black and white it. So we're going to the image, black and white. And then I just want to play about with these settings. Levels, bring up the white. So it looks painted. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that. So save. There's a cry tiff in my cry engine, in my textures, in my wood. Right there. So this will be wood bear. In fact, I'm going to create a new text. I'm going to have bear. I'm going to wood bear. Wood bear underscore diffuse. I'm going to save that as a diffuse. Because if we save it as a white one, we can change a lot of the colors. And it shouldn't look too bad. I'm also going to open up whatever it's called, crazy bump. And I'm going to open it up.
So wood, bear, wood bear diffuse. Go in here, click on wood. Add the normal, uh, the diffuse. You see, we've got a white window. So it actually, doesn't look too bad white either. However, we're going to go for like a dark grey. We could even go brown with this. Uh, you want it to look more realistic, brown though. I'll go for like there. And look, we keep the wood detail in too. And it looks good. Like I said, easiest way of doing it. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go like a dark grey, purpley, bluey, tinny colour. So. Round about there. Again, wood. And we're just going to do the diffusing the normal now. So we don't really want it to be that bumpy. However, we do want the window to have some bump. So we're going to add a normal to the windows. We're going to add. Let's go for that concrete. So concrete. Oh no, that's way too concretey. That's a DDNA as well. We only want a normal. We don't want a DDNA. We want literally just a normal. So if we have a DDN anywhere, so textures, defaults actually. Um, not the so window. No, uh, default <gasps> generic window. No glass. Glass DDN. There we go, glass damaged. Uh, might look a little bit too bad. Uh, let's see what else we got. I've got sign glass. Ah, it looks pretty nice. It looks freaking awesome. Only problem is though, is that's perfect. Window glass DDN. So it's got a slight little normal to it, nothing too much. It's not all repeating the same image. No. So I think now I've got that on, I'm gonna change the tiling of my normal. So I'm going to give it like a 12 by 12 and nothing happened. So I'm going to change my diffuse tile into 12 as well. See if that works. Yeah, it did. Let's try 52. I quite like that, but I'm just gonna have to do one. Maybe we can change it to point one. Ah, that looks good. Oh, that's pretty nice. Change this one too to point two. Ah, can't do that. We we'll just leave it at that. So one on one. Change the specular colour just to like a really dark grey. We have like a blue, yeah. I think the windows may be a little too dark. So I'm just gonna lighten them up. Ah oh, it looks perfect guys. Change the glass a bit. Let's go for a little bit of a Round about there. And just see how that looks. So, we're going to sharpen it and then we're going to turn the intensity down to about 5. Show recognition off. Copy the normal and bring it over to here. Do the same with the specular. Give it a 
bit of slope influence. And this is going to be our DDNA. Gonna save that. So that's that we go back to wood and we can zoom in on the wood now and just watch how it comes to life. Textures, wood, bear, DNA. There we go. Let's get a slight little bump to it now. If we add the diffuse into the specular we can change the specular too here we go okay so now all we need to do is work on the bitumen I'm gonna get a new bitumen in for this just the between men Go back to bitmen here. So click seamless, and we're going to use this one because I like this one. So download it, and let's open it in Photoshop. Change the size to 2048. By 2048. New and save so and here we go to roof and it looks like I already have that bitman in there so that's even better so I'm going to do it again so let's go do bitman textures roof bitman fuse and uh, DDNA Turn it down a bit, like let's have it like a perfect. Okay, so that's all done. We just have the floor to do, which I'm probably gonna go with like a grass. So I'm gonna change the bitumen's material to a fabric, and then floor. I'm gonna add a grass texture just to see how it looks. So grass. Change the color down. No, maybe maybe not. Maybe maybe we we'll go for like a concrete slab. Textures, concrete, floor. So we'll do the slabs. So turn the brightness up. Normals. Put the DDNA in. PDR it. Change that to concrete. And uh, doesn't really need a lot change to it. Can change the time to about point seven. And there we go. Looking good. We could also, if we wanted to, just like change the offset to about point 0.1. Point 0 0.06. Zero 0.05. Zero 0.01. Zero 0.09. Point 0.11. One one. One two. One three. I think one four should do it, yeah. 135 perfect so all I've done is just lined it up a bit at the bottom right so I saved concrete now proxy is gonna be proxy no draw and this is gonna be proxy no draw we're gonna save this so it's saved yeah okay now 
once we've done that we can now start working on the modular so all of the textures are on it they're all in the right place we have a look around the building there's no issues we're quite happy to go right guys yeah yeah I can't hear you okay so let's go we're gonna work next to this right so the first thing that I'm gonna do is open up blender and I'm gonna do the same thing that I keep on doing is ah, come on right I'm gonna stop the video here fix my keyboard and then come back to you